Hi there everybody, Professor Tomney here, and I am back with another Chem Complete series. We're going to be looking at the Bohr model of the atom today and calculating discrete energy jumps between various states that you can find electrons in. So let's go ahead and get started with that and we'll discuss the Bohr model of the atom. So when you take a look at Bohr's model, and a lot of instructors usually tend to use this when you're starting to talk about calculating energy jumps in electrons as they're going between one state to another. So Bohr's model really takes the simplest approach to a model of an atom, and that is hydrogen. So if you think of hydrogen, you've got your nucleus, right? I'll put a plus charge in there to represent the proton. For the hydrogen atom, you would have more if it was a, a different type of atom. And then right here, right? Here's your, what we would say, your, your first shell. So we can call this n equals 1 or quantum level 1. And this is known as your principal quantum number. We're going to have electron quantum numbers coming up here soon. So this is where I can find an electron, right? And the, the kind of oversimplified version of the atom is you've got your nucleus and then you've got your electron that orbits around the nucleus, right? Kind of like a planet orbiting around the sun. And so then... The simple analogy here is that here is n equals 2, so we're another level out, and then we have n equals 3, sorry about that guys, give me a second, oh, come on. sorry about that guys, the, we ordered a new dishwasher and they were calling to let us know it's going to be delivered tomorrow, so anyway back to this. Um, if you take a look at this, here's the nucleus, right? You've got these simple energy levels or electron clouds, shells, whatever you want to call them, quantum levels. And these are where the electrons can reside. So what Bohr was stating when he was using this model was that these energy levels are kind of like rungs on a ladder. And remember, we talked about quantized energy, right? So here's energy. And what we say is that N equals 1 would be the lowest possible energy level and this would be low in energy because n equals one is close to the nucleus so think about what that means theoretically it means i have an electron with a negative charge very close to the nucleus which contains the proton with the positive charge from an electrostatic standpoint those two forces are really stabilizing to one another and so this would be considered the lowest in energy and so then the next one would be n equals two and n equals 2 would be higher in energy, again, because now the electron is further away from the nucleus. And the further out I basically branch that electron from the nucleus, the higher the energy is going to become. That electron will get higher and higher in energy. And then we have n equals 3, which would be even higher in energy. And then n equals 4, which again, higher in energy. And you can go on and on like this. Now I want to point out something that I did here. If you notice, these are not to scale in terms of one another. So in other words, the distance between 1 and 2 is uh, larger than between 2 and 3, which is larger than between 3 and 4, so on and so forth. And that's done on purpose because the energy jump from level 1 to level 2 is going to be the largest jump in energy here. This is going to be a very large jump because I'm a, taking that initial step away from the nucleus. So I, it requires a lot more energy to get from the ground state of n equals 1 up to n equals 2, right? So if I have a little electron, we're going to see soon we start representing them with these little half arrows like this. If I want to promote this electron up to this level, it's going to require a good chunk of energy in comparison to the promotion of an electron in level 2 going up to n equals 3, and then that one would be significantly more than n equals 3 being promoted up to 4, so on and so forth, right? Now, the jump between 1 to 4 is still considered to be larger than 1 to 2 because I have to go past energy level 2 into energy level 3 and then finally into 4. So they get smaller, okay? These, are, these terms are kind of all relative to one another, but we're going to get smaller the further we climb up here. Now, this is not smaller in energy. It's smaller in the energy gap between them. So these are actually higher in energy, uh, but the jump between them is not as severe in terms of the amount of energy you have to put in to jump, or we would say excite the electron 
up to that next level. And so that's the Bohr's model. It's a very simplified model of the hydrogen atom, which shows these quantized, remember that means discrete amounts of energy as electrons jump between these levels. So just before we get into the math or the calculation part, I kind of want to make this very, very clear here. What is going on with my pen? And I'm just getting plagued with issues here. Oh, come on. Okay, now it's clear. So uh, just to be completely clear about this, what we're talking about is, right, here's energy level one. And then here's energy level two or quantum level two. And here's three. So what we're saying with this is that the electron can be found here or it can be found here. Those are the two energy states that can reside. And it's kind of weird because we think about if we excite an electron that it's going to go travel up, right, to this level or travel back down to this level. So we would think, oh, well, at some point it's going to have energy, continuous energy that's found somewhere in between this region. And it turns out that's not true. In quantum mechanics and uh, quantum theory, you have these discrete energy packets. So you're either at energy level n equals one, or at any given time you are at n of a energy level n equals two. Uh, you're not found anywhere in between here. So the way that we go about, this is driving me absolutely nuts. The way that we go about calculating this, is we say we're going to use the Rydberg constant. Now the Rydberg constant is kind of, there's different ones that you can use. We're going to use one that wraps up uh, Planck's constant and frequency and a couple other things. But the Rydberg constant that we will use is 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. And we're going to plug that into an equation. So delta E, remember that delta means change in. So the change in energy between energy levels when an electron is jumping from one level to the next, or it may be coming back down from a high energy level to a low energy level, is going to equal the Rydberg constant, which we will write as R sub H. So this is R sub H. And that will be multiplied by 1 over energy level initial squared minus 1 over energy level final squared. So n, in this case, n initial is whatever quantum level the electron is initially in. And then n final is going to be whatever that final level is. And this can be used to calculate the difference in energy between those two levels. Now you should be able to realize that you could also calculate the energy of an electron at any given point if you know what level it's in, because this is the difference, so I get the change in energy. So the energy itself, we actually use negative Rydberg constant. Now, the reason we use the negative here is because as we get close, in theory, when an electron is completely as far away as it can be from the nucleus, it's going to have very high energy. So the closer we get, and we assume we're getting closer to the nucleus as these quantum levels decrease, we use this negative to represent that we're getting close to the nucleus, um, in theory, compared to an electron that would be completely as far out as possible in space from the nucleus. Um, so you would take this, and then it would be times 1 over the energy level squared and that's just whatever energy level that you're talking about um, so this would be for the individual energy of any electron as long as you know what state it's in and this one would be for the difference using the Rydberg constant so I do believe I have a problem here and we will give this a shot yeah okay so let me clear here I'm just gonna stick to this because the, the other things giving me issues today All right so uh, here's the question. I want you to find the energy, or actually find the delta E, right, the change in energy of a photon relaxing, meaning it's coming down from a higher energy state. So a photon relaxing from an energy level of 5, quantum level 5, to 
an energy level of n equals 2. All right. So try this out. Use the equation that you just saw earlier. Copy it down if you need to. Pause the video, see if you can get the answer, and then come back. So I'll see you guys in a minute. All right. So here we go. You're going to use delta E is equal to, and you're going to use the Rydberg constant, so 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. Keep in mind that joules unit should be there because energy or change in energy is going to have to deal with joules. And then this part is unitless when we get to the quantum levels. So it's going to be 1 over, now remember it's n initial, so in this case n initial is 5. So it's going to be 1 over 5 squared, which is 1 over 25, minus 1 over 2 squared, which would be 1 fourth. If you solve that, and you can rewrite this down here as 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th joules, 1 over 25 minus 1 quarter, you should end up with negative 4.58 times 10, what do I have here, to the negative 19th joules. Okay, so a couple things to note here. Number one, not a whole lot of energy, right? To the negative 19th is a very small amount of energy. And you should think about that because we're talking about a single photon going between different quantum levels. I wouldn't expect it to be on the level of kilojoules or even regular joules. That would be far too much energy just dealing with a single photon or electron when I'm working with that. The other thing I wanted to point out here is that this is negative. Now remember, energy itself, we don't really talk about negative energy in the sense of uh, kinetic energy, potential energy, thermal energy, all that kind of stuff. But when you have delta, you're talking about change in. And so this actually makes a lot of sense because the negative here is saying, I went from an ener a high energy level, n equals 5, to a lower energy level, n equals 2, right? And so think about if I am at n equals 5 up here, and then n equals 2 is way down here, what happened? I was in a high energy state, and I fell down to a lower energy state. So I lost some energy it was lost by the system right and even the term loss we would really say it was transferred because remember you cannot create or destroy but you could you could lose it or transfer it uh, out of the system so that is how you would calculate differences in energy levels between uh, you know when a photon is relaxing or being promoted up to a higher level and that about covers it. So that's Bohr's atom and how to uh, do these calculations. So in the next lecture, we're going to talk about quantum numbers, uh, what they mean, what they represent, and how to utilize them. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Again, I'm sorry for the issues in this video, the phone call, the clearing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this is how I do it. I don't normally take, you know, multiple cuts all the time. Um, I just go as I'm going. So um, hopefully you guys will subscribe and that'll keep you up to date and I will see you for the next lecture. We will work on quantum numbers. See you there.